Hello folks, it's Daniel here. Today, we're going to be looking at how to reduce the shine on a subject's skin tones. So what am I talking about when I talk about shine? This is exactly what we're talking about here. This little hot spot of light that we have on our subject's forehead over here, on the bridge of the nose, around the tips of the nose here, and then of course, underneath the eye right over here. Now there's a number of reasons why this actually happens. The first reason is the light source that we're using. It could be a high specular type of light, an undiffused light that really casts a bright spot of light on a subject. You may see this in instances where you might be using a small modifier or a little hotspot flash and it really bounces that light off a subject's skin tones. That's not the case over here. We were using a beautiful, soft, broad light source. It was actually, if I recall, a 120 centimeter octobox, which was double diffused, and it generally created some beautiful, soft light across the scene. Let's just zoom out over here. You can see that we've got beautiful, soft light patterns already there. So our light source isn't actually the issue in this case. The other issue that creates highlights or the subject's skin to shine is essentially the type of skin they have. It might be oily skin that easily reflects off light, okay? Now, we can actually control that at shoot level by maybe applying some more makeup. If your client has arrived uh, with their own makeup, you can patch those areas up with makeup. Uh, what we've been doing in recent shoots, we've got a lot of ladies that come uh, over for these beauty sessions and sometimes we've got this oily skin. So whatever it does is actually apply some of her foundation of her beauty products. Um, she applies it to the skin tones and that kind of just reduces those hot spots that they have on their skin. So this is really what we were dealing with in this case over here, but we didn't apply any makeup to reduce that in the first place. So we always try to get the best we can at camera level, of course, so it reduces the workload later on. But in this case, we couldn't avoid it, and now we have to deal with it inside of Photoshop. Now, for those of you who follow my tutorials, we'll see that I normally use frequency separation for the process of actually smoothing out those tonalities and reducing those hot spots on our client's skin. I've discovered an alternative way of doing this, and it just simply adds to the toolbox or the list of tools that we can use to reduce highlights like this or reduce the shine of client's skin. So it's going to be a bit of a strange one because the actual name of this filter hasn't got anything to do with what we think it does. And it's actually called the Selective Color Tool, right? It's right down here in your adjustment panel. It's called Selective Color. We're going to click it once, okay? And there's a couple of things that I want you guys to do first in order, that, in order for this to actually work. So we've got the dialog box right over here. The very first thing that you're going to need to change is from relative to absolute, okay? You need to make sure that this little radial button is checked here on absolute, okay? Yours by default might show as reds. What we need to do is change from reds to whites, okay? Now let's just look at this from this perspective here. We've got colors here and we've got white, neutrals, and blacks. Those can be viewed as illumination patterns, okay? So we're gonna click on white because why? The shininess or the shininess in skin is actually highlights essentially, and those highlights contain elements of white, okay? So what we're going to do here is reduce those highlights by bringing down the white point or the whites in those areas. So how do we do that? What we need to do is head on to the black slider here and ramp it up. Now we can go all the way to the extreme to where it shows us these gray areas. We know we've obviously gone too far. I like to go to the extreme and then back off slowly until that gray kind of disappears, okay? It's not gonna disappear completely, but you'll notice that these highlights aren't as strong as what they were. Let's look at the before and after. Before and after. But you'll notice that there's a lack of color in those areas. So this is important because remember, in my tutorials, 
when I tackle skin tones, I essentially break it up into two areas, yellows and reds, okay? Lo and behold, we've got those two control points right here, yellow and magenta. I see magenta as red, okay? So what we're going to do here is actually add those two colors into those highlights. And how do we do that? It's simple. We're just gonna go with the slider with the yellows. We can go to the extreme here. You can see where that yellow is and then back it off slowly until it disappears like so. Look at that, okay? We're already trying to align the tonalities of those highlights with the rest of our skin tones. Now we need to add in a little bit more red in those areas. So all we need to do is go to the magenta slider here and slide it up the same way. Go to the extreme and then back it off slowly but surely until you see the right matching amount of magenta. In this case over here, it's like literally one or two percent, okay? Now, obviously what's happened here is that we're actually affecting everything in our image. What we need to do is click this mask over here and invert it, right? Control I or Command I if you're using a Mac. Invert that layer so we don't see those adjustments anymore. And what I want you guys to do is head on over to the brush tool, set the flow to about 30% and then your opacity to 100% because this will allow you to build up that painted area. What I'm going to do is I'm going to resize my brush to about the size of the highlight in that area right there, okay? I'm just gonna paint over that and look at that. I've taken away that hot spot or that highlight and that shine to my client's skin. Let's go over to the bridge of the nose here. I'm gonna do exactly the same thing here, but I'm gonna resize my brush to the size of that highlight on the bridge of the nose and over the tip of her nose right here, okay? So now underneath the eye, same process, just paint over that little highlight like so. And look at that, okay? We completely gotten rid of the highlights or that shine in the skin. Now this might be quite aggressive in this case here. We need to back it off a little bit. And it's as simple as going over to the opacity tool right here. And just bring back a little bit of that shine because we still wanna have that shape and dimension to our subjects, okay? We don't wanna completely get rid of those natural highlights and skin tones because that's gonna help us define the shape of the face, okay? It's the same as that we don't wanna get rid of shadows. We need to look at highlights the same way. Okay, so let's have a look at the before and after. Simple, before and after. So there you go. Now, let me just again, talk about what causes it. Okay, because we see many tutorials out there that show you how to do things, but they don't really explain why it happens. So if you're getting hot spots of light on your subject, it could be the nature of the modifier you're using or the flash system you're using, how far it is or how close it is to a subject. Okay, it could be the fact that your subject's skin is naturally oily, in which case you need to deal with it perhaps on location if you can. You know, you always want to try to eliminate those issues before you get to the post-process stages, okay? Now, I've actually noticed one thing. The minute I get into my studio and I start using flashes, and it doesn't really matter how big I make these soft boxes and modifiers and how many layers of diffusion surfaces are put in them. There's always gonna be some kind of form of highlights and hotspots in, 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 in most of the situations, okay? So, you know, it's sometimes unavoidable at the shoot location uh, or in the studio, in which case you need to deal with it inside of Photoshop like we've done here. So look at this, before and after, we've obliterated those highlights. Now, obviously what we can do is flatten the image and then we can carry on with our frequency separation process here. I'm just gonna click that once, then go down to my colors and tones, and then I would then naturally go over to my mixer brush tool here and then start mixing in the, the tonalities there, okay? And obviously the next step beyond that would be to control the colors in my image or the colors of the skin tones. And that would mean actually going in and creating a hue and sat layer right here. And then obviously targeting yellows specifically. Now let's do this quickly here. Go up to yellows and then 
bring it back slowly but surely until you see where yellows are in the skin tones and then at that point we'd move it back to minus three or minus four whatever it may be for that particular image and that will take out the yellow tones or will take those yellow tones and shift them more to the red tones and likewise with red you know we do a similar process here we go red ramp that all the way to the top there detect the reds in our subjects skin tones invert that layer of course as we do and then just brushing in those reds and then taking control of the reds in the tonalities of the skin there by moving them more towards the yellows okay so there you have it folks just a very quick basic overview of getting rid of those uh, shiny areas of a client's skin tones and then quickly like we've done over here is just move those reds and yellows or reds and yellow tonalities closer towards each other to give us a uniform uh, color structure to the face so there you have it folks i hope you enjoyed this tutorial and we'll see you in the next session cheers for now